In this video, I will show you how you can run the Vukunya model on your local computer using either your CPU or your GPU. And why is the Vukunya model so special? For this, let's have a look at the blog post of the Vukunya model, where the authors state that the Vukunya model reaches 90% of ChatGPT quality. And this is according to the GPT-4 model, which is very interesting. And this model was trained by researchers from the UC Berkeley, CMU, Stanford, and UC San Diego. And what we can see here is that the Vukunya 13B model, so it's based on the Llama 13B model, is an open source chatbot trained by fine tuning the Llama model, as I said. And for this, they used user shared conversations collected from shared GPT. So those conversations are actually user interactions with chat GPT. So based on this, we can already assume that the model won't be superior to chat GPT because it's basically learning from the replies from chat GPT, but another try to get as close as possible to the chat GPT quality. And we saw a very similar approach already for the alpaca model. And what's very interesting, here the authors state that the Vukunya model is able to outperform the models like Lamar and Stanford alpaca in more than 90% of the cases. So basically, in almost all the cases, the Vukunya model performs better than the Lama and especially the alpaca model, which already has chat capabilities. And still, the Vukunya model is better in 90% of the cases, which is really cool and very impressive. And furthermore, the authors state that there's training and serving code provided, as well as an online demo where you can already check out the model. The model weights are not mentioned here, but more on that later. And I also want to show you this graph where you can see the quality assessed by GPT-4, more on that also later, how they actually evaluated the different models. But we can see the Lama 13B, Alpaca 13B, Vukunya 13B BART and ChatGPT model. And here we can see that Vukunya almost has BART quality, which is really impressive. And if we compare it to Alpaca, we can see that the Vukunya model is way closer to ChatGPT quality than to Alpaca 13B quality. So there is another big improvement done just within two weeks from the Alpaca 13B model to the Vukunya 13B model. But before we further analyze the model qualities, let's first understand how the researchers actually evaluated the different chatbots. And for this, they stated their previous approach of using self-instruct can nowadays, with most state-of-the-art chatbots, effectively answer. And because of this, it's basically for us humans difficult to discern any differences in performance because the different outputs of the chatbots are all valid and makes sense. So it's hard to actually rank those different outputs because they're similarly good. And one very interesting approach is that they then used eight different question categories, which for example, could be the Fermi problem, but also role play scenarios, coding, math tasks, and a few more. And what I think is very interesting in the whole approach to say, come on, we can't read all of the different evaluations. It's way too much. Let's just use GPT-4. This is already admitting that GPT-4 has almost human level capabilities. So to make our lives easier, we just let GPT-4 do the heavy lifting for us so we can evaluate different worst performing models because GPT-4 of course is superior in this setup. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense to rank the different models. It's a very interesting approach. Of course, they also state the authors, it's not a scientific approach because GPT in a way is a black box for us and we don't know on which criteria it really measures how good the quality of a result is. But we already saw that GPT-4 has amazing capabilities. So I can also understand using this approach. And I also mentioned in earlier videos, right now it's very difficult to actually find a good evaluation method to on the one hand side, understand why a specific model is better in a certain measure. And on the other hand side, even find a measure that can effectively estimate the quality of a chatbot. And the last thing that I would like to mention on this blog post is the memory optimizations. So the Vicunia model is able to understand longer context. So instead of having a context length of 512, which the Alpaca model had, now the Vicunia model has a context length of 2048, which the original Llama model also had. But this on the other hand side also leads to an increase in GPU memory requirements. And the second thing, which is really cool, is the multi-round conversations. So the training loss is adjusted to account for multi-round conversations and compute the fine-tuning loss solely on the chatbot's output. So when fine-tuning the Vukunya model, the authors adjusted the loss in a way that the Vukunya model takes into account historic messages, which leads to a better capability or quality in having multi-round conversations with a chatbot for example, the alpaca model was just trained with one instruction, maybe an input and then an output. But the alpaca model 
wasn't trained with multi-round conversations very much maybe as a follow-up to a former asked question and relates to that okay but enough about the blog post now let's start running the Vukunya model on our local computer using either our CPU or GPU but to run the model we actually need the model weights and the authors didn't mention them in the blog post what about the model weights and for this I have good news the model weights got released this morning for the Vukunya 13b model as we can see here a first preview and to confirm that it was really released today is for me right now the 4th of April and you can see the messages are just a few hours ago so this is all very recent and one thing that I found very funny is this github thread where people were already asking four days ago about the model weights and one guy said that this is not an open source spirit at all for all we know they're just using the chat GPT API in their demo he's very skeptical and one of the authors just replied best compliment we've heard so far which I thought is very funny and I wanted to show it to you okay but now Let's really start running the model on our local computer. And for this, we will start with the GPU version. And then I will show you how you can install the model on your local computer just using your CPU. And the authors gave an installation guide and showed how to use the Vicunia weights, uh, which are delta weights that comply to the Llama model license. For example, the official alpaca weights, to my knowledge, are not released yet. And to overcome this, they now produce delta weights, which can be applied to the Llama weights. So you get the llama weights wherever from and then you can apply the delta weights and the authors of the Vicunia model can just release their weights without having any license concerns and what the authors state here is that for the conversion you need around 60 gigabytes of cpu ram which is a lot and then to run the full model like the full precision model you need 28 gigabytes of gpu memory which is also quite a lot and i thought probably many of you won't have both hardware requirements uh, fulfilled at your local computer in case you have both requirements fulfilled I would recommend you maybe checking out this installation guide because that should be straightforward and easy to follow and if you don't fulfill those requirements stay with me because I will show you how you can run this model on your CPU and you need just around 10 gigabytes of CPU RAM for it and I will show you how you can run it on a GPU that also just needs around 12 gigabytes and how is this possible and surprise surprise one more time quantization helps us running the model with way less computational effort and memory requirements. While we will lose, of course, a little bit of precision and quality in the model, it's a good trade-off to run a still very good performing model on your local computer or just on your CPU, which is very impressive. And the results will be still very good, but more on that later. But as you can see, the authors don't provide a quantized version yet. And how can we get one? I found there's already a Discord server and people shared their quantized versions there. So we don't have to apply the delta weights and quantize the model ourselves. Instead, we can just use the already quantized model version, which becomes very handy for us. And because of that, many thanks to Anon for providing the GPTQ quantized model version and also for Ichadea, I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly, for the GGML quantized model version, which we already saw with the Alpaca and Llama C++ files which I already showed in a past video. And now I'll show you how you can run the Vacunia model on your local computer using a GPU. Since I don't have a GPU on my local computer, I'm using a cloud instance, but the commands that I show you will also work on your local computer. So don't worry about that. And the first thing that I will do is installing Miniconder to create a new virtual environment for a new project. You know, it's always good to use a new environment for each project to avoid any version mismatches. So the first thing that I will do is downloading the Miniconda installation script. Then you can check if the checksum is correct for the downloaded file. And as a last step, I will install Miniconda. And then I will run this command to load Conda. Otherwise I would have to restart my terminal. So now we can see our base environment here. And don't worry, I will share this Medium article later. <laughs> it's not perfectly edited right now. And there you will find all the comments so you can just copy and paste them and don't have to type them from the screen. Okay, and once we have Miniconda installed, we will create our virtual environment. For this, we will use the following command using Python version 3.9. You can try to check out 3.10. I just used 3.9 and it worked for me. Okay, now we have created our Conda environment called Vukunya. And now we activate that environment. Okay, perfect. We can see the environment is activated. And what we will do now is we will install text generation web UI. This is not necessarily required, but if you want to interact or chat with the bot, I personally really like using an UI instead of typing in the terminal. So because of that, I will use for this tutorial the text generation web UI to interact with a Wakunya model. Let's jump to 
our text generation web UI folder and install all required modules. And as a next step, we have to install an additional repository, which allows to install in our web UI GPTQ quantized models, for example, the Llama model. And I want to give you a briefly introduction into the GPTQ quantization. So this is the GPTQ paper. And as we can see, the updated version was just released a few days ago. And I think this figure shows quite good the effect of quantizing a model. So here we can see the amount of parameters in billions for a model. And as we remember, the Vukunia model has 13 billion parameters. So it would be around here and around here. And here we can see the full precision model compared to the GPTQ quantized 4-bit model has a slightly higher perplexity. Perplexity is a measure for large language models, which describes a little bit the confidence the model has to generate the next word. It's an estimate basically on how good a large language model is. So we can assume that, that by quantizing our model gets a little bit worse. But as you can see here in this area and also here, the, the model just gets slightly worse, but we need way fewer VRAM and also computational resources for the actual inference of the model. So by accepting a slightly worse model version, we are able to run the model on way more machines or hardware. And now in our web UI folder, we create another folder which is called repositories, change our directory to that folder and then clone that earlier mentioned repository. And then again, we jump into that folder that we cloned. And I then ran into an issue that my CUDA home arrival wasn't installed and had to change the image that I was using with a GPU instance. I had to do all the steps again. And now we're back here. And now the installation step is finally done. And from here, the only step that's missing is actually downloading the quantized model. And for this, we will go back to our web UI repository. And then we will run the script download model. And here we just state the hugging face path. So the username and the model that we would like to download. And this can take a little bit because it's like eight gigabytes. So depending on your bandwidth, this could take a longer time. Okay, and once the model is downloaded, we can already start the web UI. And for this, we will use the Python server pi file. We will activate the chat mod and pass as an argument our model name and the model type because those GPTQ quantized model versions could technically also be based on other model types than Llama. And then we will pass two parameters which are important for the GPTQ quantized model version. And as a last step, I activated chair because I'm in a GPU instance and I'm not working on my local computer. So I will access the web UI over the internet. All right, perfect. And as we can see, everything is working. Our web UI is running. And then I will now copy this link. You can just use this one if you're working on your local computer. And all right, perfect. And this is our web interface. And now we can start communicating or chatting with our Volcania model. And during the time I was recording this video, for some reason, the model didn't produce as good results as it did earlier. And it was very confusing. So here I asked the model, tell me about yourself. I'm sorry, but I don't have any information on myself. And then it starts explaining it. its name is Rachel and she's a graphic designer who loves bubblegum and cats. And then I just pressed enter to continue the generation of text. And then it replies, oh my goodness, I'm just a simple AI language model. I assist users in generating text or responses to their inquiries. For some reason, then it adds, what are some of your favorite hobbies? I replied, I like to play football. What about you? And then again, it says, as an AI language model, I don't have personal preferences per se. Uh, however, I do enjoy playing football and spending time with my friends and family. And what was also interesting is, here, the model asked, how did you get into graphic design? While I never mentioned that, it just states here that Rachel loves graphic design. So for some reason, within the last few hours, something happened and the results are not as stable anymore. But I saw that many were struggling in the Discord server setting all this up. And I thought it's still worth it sharing how I got at least here. So you can already start working with a Vikinio model. And maybe at the time you're running all this, it's already fixed and you won't encounter the issue that, that I encountered right now. So let's hope for the best. And yeah, I wish I could show you the results that I had earlier, because if I would have known that I end up with this, I wouldn't have made this video. But yeah, as I said, the weights were released today and also got quantized today. So of course, not everything is perfect the first day. Let's give it a few days and I'm pretty sure it will get more stable. Okay, and now let's run the Vukunia model using our CPU. And for this, we will also first create a Condor environment and call it this time Vicunia CPU. And once the Vicunia CPU environment is created, we will activate it 
typing in condor activate Vakunia CPU. And then we will clone the Llama C++ repository to use the quantized version. Okay, and then we will jump into that folder that we now created and finally call make. Okay, perfect. And the only thing that's left now is to download the quantized model version. And for this, I use the Python module of Hugging Face Hub to download the model from Hugging Face. I'm sure there are also other ways, but feel free to use this way. So I first installed Hugging Face Hub and then I switched into a Python interpreter. You can technically also just write a Python file, but I thought for two lines, that's all right for me. So what I did then is typed in from Hugging Face Hub, import hf hub download. This is the method that we would like to use. And then the only thing that's left is calling this method by stating the repository ID, which I showed you earlier, the file name, that's the quantized model version and where to store. And for this, I use the models folder. And since I have this file already in my cache, for me, running this command only creates a symbolic link right now. But for you, it will definitely take some time because the model has around eight gigabytes. And depending on your bandwidth, that can definitely take some time. Okay, and once the model is downloaded, just write exit to leave the Python interpreter. And then we can already start using the model by using the main file that we created. Also, here we state our model version. Okay, now let's run the comment. And I thought I would just ask the Vakunia model, what are the 10 all-time best football players? And let's see about that. And as we can see here, the model still does some mistakes. As we can see in the first place, there's Diego Maradona. And also just his last name, Maradona, is listed on number six. And the same happened with Lionel Messi, with being two times listed in this list. You know, since the quantized model just got released today, I think there will be some improvements made to this. Also, as you can see here, for the Vacunia model, I think that this basically indicates the end of the sentence and it keeps generating text. So all this wouldn't be required. That was actually the perfect answer, excluding that it was not 100% correct with the right style. So I think to the existing tools, they have some adjustments to be made to 100% be compatible with the new Vacunia model, but it's an early start. You know, the weights were just released today. So I'm very sure we will see improvements and hopefully we can soon use the full capability of the Vacunia model. Okay, and that's it for today's video. I hope it could still help you setting up the Vacunia model on your local computer using either your GPU or your CPU. And one more time, I wish I could have shown you the results that I got earlier because I was very happy with the results and I was also able to generate code in a very satisfying way. So this way it feels even worse now releasing this video without showing how good the results are. But if you don't believe me, try the online demo of the Vekenia model because there you can see how good and how capable the full precision model is. And I'm pretty sure it is not only the quantization that caused the issues that I encountered today. So I will definitely keep trying to get this fixed and if I hear any other updates, I will definitely keep you updated in another video. So feel free to subscribe to my channel. And that's it for today. Have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.